Today, we're introducing a real murder case that unveils an absolute horror to the students, contrary to their seemingly peaceful campus life. It's called the PhD's death at Yale University. On September 8, 2009, Annie, a graduate student at Yale University, was believed to have disappeared. According to her roommate, she went to the School of Medicine early in the morning as usual. After completing the prescribed work in the office, she went to the Animal Research Laboratory to continue the experiment. She usually stays there for a long time, but she used to get back to the bedroom before dark. If she has to work overtime, she will inform her roommates in advance so that everyone can know her whereabouts. But after Annie went to the Animal Research Lab that night, there was no message from her. Now that there are only five days left before her scheduled wedding with her fiancé, how could Annie disappear for no reason? The safety situation of the Yale campus is generally good, with surveillance cameras and 24-hour security patrols. If Annie hadn't left voluntarily, the whole incident would have been quite serious and even affected the personal safety of teachers and students at the school. Therefore, after receiving the report, the police immediately took action. They collected all the surveillance footage and questioned the personnel at the Animal Research Laboratory one by one, hoping to find Annie's whereabouts as soon as possible. Annie's sudden disappearance caused a stir on the campus, and some people even speculated that Annie was deliberately escaping from her marriage. The 24-year-old Annie is a perfectionist and extremely strict with herself. She's excellent in her academics and also received a $160,000 scholarship before graduating from the University of Rochester in New York. She successfully applied to Yale University's graduate program for a PhD in pharmacology. She hopes to pioneer in degenerative diseases and develop drugs to alleviate and prevent metabolic diseases. Annie and her college classmate, Jonathan, have been in love for many years. They study and progress together. While Annie chose to study at Yale, Jonathan went to Columbia University to study physics and mathematics. The long-distance relationship did not weaken the relationship between the two. Although they can only get together for a while on weekends, they both cherish even a minute. For the upcoming wedding for her and Jonathan, Annie has considered almost every detail, including makeup, hairstyle, and even hand-stitched a veil for herself. Annie has always told her friends that her wedding must be flawless. She holds high expectations for her wedding, which might explain why she disappeared suddenly due to the pressure. When there were only five days left before the wedding, she still had a lot of research work to complete. At the same time, when she found there were still tons of preparations for her to follow up on, she became anxious and didn't want anything to be delayed. But time doesn't seem to allow her to take care of everything. Her family lives on the West Coast and cannot offer any help. Jonathan also lives on Long Island, New York. Although it is not far away, he has always been helpless. Therefore, some people speculate that she finally chose to escape from marriage due to the huge pressure caused by her work and wedding preparations. But the detective doesn't think so, because Annie's friends say that Annie never bows her head to difficulties and is calm in everything. It is precisely because she strives for perfection in everything that at this critical moment, she will choose to go all out. Moreover, according to the detective investigation, Annie is still in her busy schedule to submit articles to the newspaper. Her topic has nothing to do with medical care or marriage, but about how to defend yourself and escape through a series of disturbing crime incidents, especially when the victims are women on campus. This also shows Annie still has free time and she is not as exhausted as everyone guessed. Besides, Annie may have been involved in trouble recently. For some reason, she cannot or is unable to tell others directly, so she is fighting the trouble in her own way. On the afternoon of September 9, the police found Annie's wallet, mobile phone, and credit card. They were placed in the office of the medical school. From this point, Annie did not intend to leave the office for too long. Annie did go to the animal research lab because a technician said she saw Annie in the lab at 12.45 p.m. that day, when she was about to leave the lab and they said hello to each other. On September 10, the bridegroom-to-be, Jonathan, arrived at Yale. He actively cooperated with the investigation. Jonathan was out of state when Annie's accident happened. He was worried that Annie was abducted because he knew that Annie would never leave without a word. The FBI also joined the investigation the same day. They set up a command center on the campus and analyzed all relevant information collected by the police officers and Yale security personnel. In order to solve the case as soon as possible, the school has set up a bounty of $10,000 for clues. Later that day, they noticed the useful clue after the agents skimmed through footage from 75 surveillance cameras on the Yale campus. It's shown that the missing Annie entered the research lab at 10.9 a.m. on September 8. She was wearing a knee-length skirt, a green blouse, and a beaded necklace around her neck while holding a stack of documents in her hands, all looking normal. There were no suspicious stalkers behind her. 
Because of the confidentiality of the experimental project, the surveillance inside the lab building is limited. They can only check her movements through the record made by Annie's access card. It's revealed that she entered the G13 lab within two minutes of entering the building, and she also went to G23 and G22 later. After entering G22, there was no other record of the access card, and Annie was not found to have walked out of the building ever since then. Around 1 p.m. in the afternoon, a fire alarm was triggered in the lab building, and all personnel evacuated the building due to that. The FBI watched the video footage multiple times and confirmed that Annie was not found among the people leaving the building. Could it be possible that she never left the building after that? The FBI immediately blocked the building and searched the 30,000-square-foot lab building, floor by floor, room by room. They do not miss every corner, including wardrobes and large cabinets that need to be opened for inspection. Perhaps Annie was trapped in a corner of the building, and she's too weak to cry out for help. The search continued until the next afternoon. The agent entered room G22, where Annie was last seen. It's a storage room full of boxes and stainless steel roller stands. In a corner, the detective found a bead that looked like a bead on the necklace Annie was wearing that day. It seems like there might be a fight, causing the bead to be scattered there. The agents tapped on the walls and metal shelves, calling Annie's name repeatedly, but no one answered. When the agent removed the shelf leaning against the wall, a white wall was revealed, but also nothing unusual was found. However, after a careful inspection, they found a few drops of blood near the baseboard. Detectives determined that something must have happened here and that Annie is likely to have suffered misfortune before the fire broke out. This explains why the FBI was unable to locate Annie from the surveillance video. But in the entire lab building, apart from these traces of blood, no corpse or other clues were found. Could it be that Annie has left the laboratory in other ways? The school said that the garbage discharged from the laboratory is divided into different categories before sending to the garbage dump for further processing. Due to the lack of time, the police directly stopped the incineration of the garbage dump located 40 miles away, hoping to find any useful evidence there. But all the efforts came to nothing. On September 12, they further searched G22 and lifted the room ceiling. Agents found blood-stained rubber gloves and socks in the compartment, suggesting someone was deliberately hiding evidence there. At the same time, after analyzing surveillance video and access card data, the FBI narrowed their suspicion to three people. Two of them are engineering contractors, and the other is a laboratory technician. Their movements in the lab building that day were similar to Annie's, but both contractors said they had alibi and had witnesses to testify against them. The laboratory technician named Raymond also seems to be very honest and innocent. As early as the beginning of the incident, he took the initiative to report to the police, saying that on the day Annie disappeared, he encountered Annie at about 12.45. The two exchanged greetings, and then Annie passed by, getting ready to walk out of the lab building. Although Raymond could answer the detective's questions naturally, they became more and more suspicious of him, because the record shows that Annie entered G13 at 10.11 a.m. on September 8. Half an hour later, Raymond also walked in, but Annie did not leave at that time, so the two people had an intersection there for a while. It's unlike what Raymond told them earlier. Raymond was there for 46 minutes after Annie stayed in room G22. What's more, he was the only person in and out of G22 during that time. According to the campus surveillance video, Raymond was hesitant to follow the crowd out of the building alone after the fire alarm was triggered. He then walked straight to the park across the street, sat down on the steps of the park, and put his head in his hands, looking very remorseful. This behavior seems unusual, but since there is no substantial evidence and Raymond's background is very clean, the FBI can only observe him secretly. On September 13, it's supposed to be Annie and Jonathan's original wedding day. When the agent entered the G22 room again, at about 7 o'clock in the morning, he vaguely smelled an unusual odor. Following the smell, the detective came to a built-in bathroom and found a metal gusset on the wall behind the toilet. This should be the repair port for the cable duct. He opened the pinch plate, and the blood on the pipe exposed everything. Detectives remove these cables and wires and find Annie standing upside down. According to the forensic report, Annie died of neck strangulation. She was found disheveled, but no signs of obvious assault were shown on her body. The forensic doctor said that her chin and collarbone had been broken during her lifetime, and the place where she was finally placed was extremely small. She was forcibly squeezed inside. On September 17, 2009, nine days after Annie's murder, Raymond was arrested. He failed a polygraph test in a follow-up investigation. Near where Annie's body was found, there was a green ink pen, which belonged to Raymond. Also, some visible scratches were found on Raymond's body that looked like fingernails. Raymond's DNA was detected on Annie's clothes and in the toilet where Annie was found. 
Raymond's sperm was also found on her period pads, and Annie's blood was also found on the boots at Raymond's home. On March 17, 2011, Raymond pleaded guilty. On June 13, he was sentenced to 44 years in prison, but he remained silent on why and how he committed the crime. Some people speculate that Raymond fell in love with Annie after knowing her. Although the two people did not have much interaction and only shared a laboratory, he could not extricate himself, not only because of Annie's charm, but also because of Raymond's fascination with Asian culture. Thinking that Annie was going to get married in five days, he couldn't win Annie's heart, so he forced Annie. But with Annie's fierce resistance, Raymond chose to kill her. He may have premeditated the plots for a long time. Coincidentally, a large amount of steam was released during the operation of a high-pressure sterilizer in the laboratory that day, which mistakenly triggered the fire alarm. So when Raymond was forced out of the lab building, he didn't have much time to clean up the scene as he expected. According to the access card, Raymond frequently entered and exited in room G22 after the fire alarm was lifted. It is also said that Annie may have had a conflict with Raymond at work, and that Raymond deliberately chose to hurt Annie in the last days before her marriage, in order to deliberately destroy Annie's perfection. After the incident, Raymond's ex-girlfriend was interviewed, and she told more stories about her ex-boyfriend, which might tell his real motive in killing Annie. Raymond and his ex-girlfriends started dating when he was 16. He's a great baseball player, well-mannered, and a popular handsome guy. But just three months after their relationship, he began to reveal his true color. Raymond is manipulative and likes to control everything, including what his girlfriend wears, who she hangs out with, and what she talks about. He asked his girlfriend to behave the way he wanted, and if she violated it, he would resort to violence. This reveals Raymond's paradoxical double-sided personality, and it is an endless fear for the girl after having a close relationship with him. But luckily in the end, the girlfriend was able to break up with him through the intervention of the police. Raymond read out his confession in public on the trial day, saying that he regretted ruining everyone, including his own career and his girlfriend, and that he was very sorry for everyone. But this confession could not make Annie's family ease their anger. They felt that what Raymond regretted most was because his future was ruined. He didn't and couldn't really appreciate how much pain the victim's family would suffer because of his fault. Annie was their only daughter, and even keeping Raymond in jail for a lifetime would not make up for their daughter's death. Here in this case, what a murderer takes away is not just her physical body, but also the hope of Annie's whole family. This is Horror Mysteries. Enjoy and subscribe to know more mysteries around the world.